Paul Nolte. He's the Senior Wealth Advisor and Market Strategist at Murphy Silvis Wealth Management. Paul, good to have you with us. Thanks for sharing part of yours with us. Let's uh, start off with how well for financial markets, traders this week, it seems like the big event is going to be the ECB. Yeah, it is. And, you know, we got the Fed following. And the thought has been that the, the ECB is going to be leading the Fed. Mm -hmm. And so, again, the economy in uh, Europe a little bit weaker than it is here in the United States. We have some other issues here, a little bit higher inflation that might be a little bit more mm -hmm. Um So I think it's going to be a kind of a push-pull. It's unusual. Usually they move in lockstep, but this time may not be the case. Yeah, I feel like uh, following the data on Friday, right, the CPI figures uh, basically sealing the deal uh, for a quarter-point rate cut. And um, uh, obviously it does not necessarily uh, set the tone for us here in the U.S., a, a little bit of a different scenario playing out there. But we kind of think about in terms of the impact on the U.S. dollar, and I'd imagine Christine Lagarde's comments will be very closely watched. Weaken the euro, you strengthen the dollar. Ultimately, uh, you provide a bit of a headwind for stocks there. It should. However, what we have seen is the dollar, you and I have talked about it for a while. The dollar has been really range bound within yeah. about a four percent range all year long. It's been the quietest of all the commodities here. Um, interest rates are getting a bid this morning as now we're starting to price in a quarter point cut. Uh, and we've gone all over the board on interest rates from, you know, six, seven cuts to no cuts, to maybe a rate <laughs> to maybe now another cut. Uh, just in the month of May, we saw rates uh, really move dramatically from on the 10 year and 30 year bond. Uh, the short end of the yield curve has really been nailed down because of the lack of movement by the Fed. So, again, stocks are taking their cue, I think, from the hope that interest rates will still come down. We're getting some news. You alluded to it earlier. We're getting a lot of bidding going on in the markets with GameStop and some of the other meme stocks. Welcome back to 2021. So it indicates to us, at least, that there is an appetite for risk in the equity markets. You think, again, with the dollar still range bound, it would take a, quite a bit, it sounds like uh, you're saying, to get the stocks really take notice to the point where it could derail some of that longer term momentum. Actually, I wrote in my newsletter this morning, we've seen some intraday, very inverse correlation type price activity. But to your point here, Paul, on the longer term, I mean, uh, the dollar here, even when it has rallied, stocks over that longer term rally, that, that uh, move we've seen to historic highs have discounted it for the most part. No, it has. Uh, your stocks have been moving, I think, really more in, in view of or with interest rates. And as views change on inflation or on the economy, we're getting the markets reacting Paul, to that dollar. Take out those fall highs from last year. I'd imagine a little bit of a different story, you'd say. I think so. You know, again, you know, it's it's we're going to it's going to be very interesting the next couple of weeks to see what happens, both with the reaction to the ECB as mm -hmm, well as mm -hmm. uh, we got both of them on, on deck here the next couple of weeks. So I would imagine as we get uh, past Father's Day, I think we should have a pretty good idea of, of where the dollar may be heading. And we may be surprised that it continues to be in this range. ECB, um, Fed, you mentioned as well, but then I, I feel like the sleeper here has kind of been the yen, weakening again recently back to levels where we saw the BOJ have to intervene, and they're going to be uh, uh, headed our way next week as well. They are, and, you know, the Bank of Japan and, and certainly the Japanese economy as a whole has really struggled. They are the outlier as far as talking about either raising rates, lowering rates. They have been at the negative rate environment now for uh, well over the last five years, they have really struggled. And so, you know, we take a look at the yen really more as an outlier. We're seeing a lot of activity as far as travelers go, going to Japan because it is so weak at this point. So if you were looking for a place to go this summer, uh, Japan is a, is a good place. <laughs> I am looking for a place to go this summer, but I don't think it's going to be as far as Japan. I was thinking more along lines of Wisconsin somewhere, Paul. But, hey, talk to me a little bit about uh, where this leaves the Fed ultimately and uh, into that decision next week. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because you're right. I mean, inflation has come down. The economy has weakened a little. Uh, I'm not sure that there's really been enough for the economy or for the Fed to really take a look at cutting rates here. It would be very unusual to see the, the Fed cut rates with inflation where it's at. We noted that commodity prices in general have been pretty steady to higher over the last month or so. 
cocoa prices rallying again, mm -hmm. uh, prices uh, higher, uh, copper prices as well. So we're still seeing pressure in the commodity market in general, which will feed into inflation, first into producer prices, then the consumer prices. So again, still very high. We're seeing some reaction from retailers, fast food restaurants. Uh, but again, most of those, I think, are going to be short term, not necessarily long term price fixes, if you will. Paul, in this uh, data centric environment that we live in here right now, obviously the Fed has set the tone for that. They've made it pretty clear they want to see a little bit more information before they feel comfortable cutting rates. Where's your attention? Where should our focus be directed this week? I think really, I mean, there's a couple of things you'll be taking a look at. ISM data, which will be out uh, this week. We get the services mm -hmm. and factory mm -hmm. manufacturing is working hard to make it back to the 50 level, which indicates expansion. Services actually have come back a little bit toward that 50 level. Friday, it's not so much the jobless or the um, new job creation, it's gonna be wages. Okay. And what we saw last week was consumer spending backed off a little bit. We wanna see wage growth and wanna see that still well above the rate of inflation, which gives the consumer at least in a very broad sense, the ability to continue to spend. Well, Paul, in a couple of weeks, we'll have you back and we'll follow up on the ECB, the Fed, some of these policy decisions, as well as that wage component with the jobs number this week. Paul Nolte, thanks for giving us part of your Monday morning. Paul's senior wealth advisor, uh, market strategist at Murphy Selvis Wealth Management.